I'm sure you'll agree, taxes are complicated. Taxes are super complicated when you're going through a divorce. Actually, they're not that hard. In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how child dependent benefits work in a divorce situation. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Robin Grain. I'm a divorce mediator and a divorce coach. I've spent nearly 20 years as a divorce mediator, a divorce lawyer, a certified divorce financial analyst, a hearing officer, a coach, and a divorce mom of two wonderful adult children. I'm here to help you figure out how this tax stuff works as it relates to your children when you get divorced. Before we get started though, please hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell. We got a lot of great content coming out and I'd hate for you to miss it. In this video, we're gonna assume that you're sitting down settling your divorce, okay? That's, that's how the approach is gonna be, that you're sitting down and you're settling your divorce, which should always include if you have children, even if they're college-age children, who is going to get those tax benefits? So, a lot of people do 50-50 custody nowadays. In a 50-50 custody situation, it is essential that you determine how those tax benefits are gonna be divided and distributed between the parents. Otherwise, if it's not written down in your settlement agreement, the IRS is gonna default and give all those goodies away to the parent with the higher adjusted gross income. You don't ever wanna go with the IRS default. You wanna be in control. So what can you do in a 50-50 custody situation? Well, if you have two kids, one parent can take one child, one parent can take the other. If you have one child, you can alternate that child back and forth year to year. If you have three kids, well, you gotta do a little bit of figuring and negotiating and figure it out. You need to do what works best. You might even wanna run your tax returns because believe it or not, sometimes even if you get that child as you're dependent, it's not gonna do you any good. So you kinda gotta decide. Do you wanna give up a benefit completely and totally just so the other parent doesn't wanna get it? Or do you wanna give that benefit to the other parent so at least somebody benefits? Okay, if it's not a 50-50 situation, know that what's called the child tax credit, which is $2,000 off of your tax bill. Remember, a credit reduces your tax bill, a deduction reduces the income upon which you are taxed. So, under this newish tax code, what you get when you have a child is a credit. That exemption, which is really a deduction, they just call it an exemption to confuse you, is gone. So that child tax credit, if it's not a 50-50 situation, when you have to make a decision what you're gonna do with the child tax credit, if it's not a 50-50 situation, which means there's a primary parent, which the IRS calls the custodial parent, that tax credit can float back and forth. In other words, the custodial parent can give that child tax credit to the non-custodial parent. It is the custodial parent's credit by default, but he or she can give it to the other parent with Form 8332, IRS Form 8332. All right, the other tax benefits related to having minor children are the earned income credit, which disappears at a fairly low income, but that credit is always gonna stay with the custodial parent, the one that has custody 50% or greater. That's what custodial parent means by the IRS. The custodial parent doesn't have any right to give that to the non-custodial parent. Do people do it? Yeah, all the time. Are they permitted? No. Do they get busted? Not unless somebody says something, but I'm not encouraging that you don't follow the rules, okay? Another tax credit, which always stays with the custodial parent, is the dependent credit. People call it the daycare credit, okay? If you're taking that credit, you know what I'm talking about. That's a credit that the government gives you that's on a sliding scale depending on how much money you have because you're paying for your kid to be in daycare. There's also certain tax benefits you get if you have pre-tax money that you can put away at your place of business and you use that pre-tax money to pay for your kids daycare uh only the custodial parent technically has the right to use that once again 
Do non-custodial parents use that and take the benefit? Absolutely. I'm not encouraging that you break the rules. However, if you got a friend that's doing that, that just kind of happens. Finally, and this is a big deal, if you are the custodial parent, only you have the right to file your taxes as head of household. A single person has to file as single unless they're the head of household, which a custodial parent is. The big difference, there are some differences in the tax brackets, but they cut off at a certain point. The big deal is the standard deduction. Nowadays, under the new tax code, the standard deduction, in other words, what your deduction is, if you don't itemize, is $12,000 for a single person, but the head of household can deduct $18,000, which can make a huge difference on your tax return. That's something to think about. Once again, do some people claim head of household even though they're not the custodial parent? I would submit the answer is yes. I'm telling you what the rules are, not what people do. The big deal with that standard deduction, remember I said that's related to whether you can file as head of household or not, the big deal is because most or many people no longer itemize their deductions. The final area that I want to cover is if you have kids that are getting ready to go to college. Right now, and things change all the time as it relates to taxes and college kids, but now as I'm making this video, there are huge credits like $2,500 that you can get if you are paying for your kid's college. And it seems to be, even if you're paying for their college with a 529, or even if that money's coming from a gift from somebody, from what I understand, you can still take the deduction. If you have a kid 24 years or under going to school full time, however, only the custodial parent gets that credit. Who's the custodial parent when your kid's at college? Pretty much who the parents agree is the custodial parent. What tends to be recommended by most tax professionals is if you think that you're gonna qualify for one of those college credits with the IRS, you might wanna get a head start of a year or two, making sure that you're also claiming that child on your tax return while that kid's still in high school. So it doesn't look kind of funny when you're switching gears when they go to college. It's an awful lot of money if you are the custodial parent, but you would not qualify for that credit and the other parent would. You might want to think about it. Maybe there could be some sort of a sharing of whatever that other parent saved. It's something to think about. It's a lot of money. So I hope that this has helped a lot of people, a lot of my clients, I know my mediation clients really haven't kept up with the new tax code as it relates to dependent children. And they certainly don't understand how this stuff works when they're getting divorced. So I hope I've been helpful. Please hit the subscribe button, ding that little bell. There's gonna be more great content coming out and I hope to see you next time. Take care.